water supplies. Both of these chemical manufacturing processes created a waste stream which was laden with dioxin. Dioxin is a known carcinogen, but in 1971, little was known about its harmful effects, and there were no federal laws in place regarding how to dispose of it or any industrial waste. They could have told me it's cream cheese. I wouldn't know the difference between that and dioxin. It, uh, uh, I wouldn't know what dioxin really was. He hauled tanker trucks of this material where it was mixed in large holding tanks. He then would draw down off of this and use the resulting mixture to spray on unpaved roads, parking lots, and in some cases horse arenas in order to control dust. 1971 brought the first sign that Bliss's brew was toxic when a number of horses died at an arena he sprayed. The owners of the arena contacted the state health department to seek their help in trying to identify the toxic agent. The Missouri Department of Health then solicited assistance from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. In 1974, the CDC identified dioxin as the toxic agent responsible for the horse deaths. That drew in officials from the Environmental Protection Agency, which eventually traced the dioxin to the Napaco facility in Verona, Missouri, and to Russell Bliss. We had a list of places where Russell Bliss was alleged to have sprayed dioxin-contaminated waste oil. EPA was able to identify a number of locations to sample, and in fact, we did identify Times Beach as one of the locations. Residents of Times Beach were dismayed to learn they'd been living on dioxin-contaminated soil for over a decade. I had no idea what dioxin was. I had no idea what it was used for, how it was manufactured. My name is Russell Martin Bliss. The state made a big taboo to be out of it. They, uh, they said it was the most deadly poisonous known to man. Well, I went before a hearing of a bunch of political people in Jefferson City, and I took my finger to it and tasted it, and it never affected me. If I wasn't told what was in the oil, I wouldn't have known what it was if they had told me what it was. If you want the truth, you could tell me it was some kind of new jelly and I put it on toast and eat it. I didn't know what dioxin was. I swear to all of you, I had no idea this material was bad. In November of 1982, the EPA took soil samples from Times Beach to ascertain the severity of the dioxin contamination. On December 23rd, just two days before Christmas, their worst fears were realized. EPA was receiving the initial results from the lab sampling that indicated dioxin concentrations as high as 100 parts per billion existed on the roadways. Dioxin is considered hazardous to humans at only one part per billion. Times Beach was abandoned. With their city deemed unlivable, residents lobbied for a buyout. They knew that there was no technology available to clean up the community. And they knew they couldn't move back because it wasn't safe. In 1983, the estranged residents of Times Beach got their wish. The federal government's Superfund program, which provides funds for hazardous waste sites, paid residents for their property. Soon after, the state of Missouri disincorporated the city. For over a decade, the hazardous waste site was gated off and patrolled 24 hours a day. The once thriving community was transformed into a ghost town. Finally, in 1997, after the completion of numerous investigations and lawsuits, the EPA embarked on a massive cleanup effort. All standing structures were bulldozed and placed inside a landfill the size of four football fields. The EPA then brought in a massive incinerator to purge the dioxin from the Times Beach.